help. I am not prepared to receive anyone. Come back later. I'm sorry, madame, but a man has been murdered. I must ask you a few questions. You must have misunderstood me. I cannot speak to you just now. Madame, I know that Sonia Armstrong is your goddaughter. Come in, please. Please forgive my intrusion, madame, but I really must ask you some questions. Then ask. I'll answer if it pleases me. Hmm, we have not been properly introduced, yet I have observed her a couple of times, so I can already deduce some things about her. I must admit I'm not right this time. Et voila! I will first ask you about last night. Will you tell me your movements? I went to bed just after dinner. I read until 11, then tried to sleep. Later I woke. What caused you to awaken? I suffer from back pain, a consequence of old age interfering with an active life. I called Schmidt around 12.45 a.m. to give me a massage. She did so until I fell asleep. How long was she with you? A good hour, I would say. I see. The first initial of your first name, Natalia, in the Cyrillic alphabet looks exactly like the letter H in the Latin alphabet. I'm Russian, Monsieur Poirot, and I was the head of a museum of antiquities in St. Petersburg for decades until I moved to Berlin recently. <laughs> I'm familiar with Cyrillic. This handkerchief is yours, isn't it? Uh, yes, indeed. I lost it. It was found in Monsieur Ratchet's room. Can you explain to me why Madame Schmidt didn't identify the handkerchief? She must have known it was yours. Possibly to protect me. She is very loyal. Your next question will be, how did my handkerchief come to be lying by a murdered man's body? My reply to that is, that I have no idea. That is not an answer, madame. It is all I am able to give you. I must tell you, Princess Dragomirov, I have discovered something astonishing. And that is? You are Sonia Armstrong's godmother. You make that sound like a revelation. I have never hidden the fact, monsieur. You knew Colonel Armstrong well, then? I knew him slightly. But his wife, Sonia Armstrong, was my goddaughter. I was on terms of friendship with her mother, the actress Linda Arden. Linda Arden was a genius, one of the greatest tragic actresses in the world. I was not only an admirer of her art, I was a personal friend. Very well. But this links you to the Armstrong kidnapping case. Elena Andreni is the sister of Sonia Armstrong, the late mother of Daisy Armstrong, kidnapped and killed by the man who was murdered on this train. Ratchet! Indeed. Was it he? Then justice has at last been served. Allow me to summarize. Do I have a choice? First coincidence, I shall call it. You are close to the Armstrong family, and the presumed assassin of Daisy Armstrong was killed while you were on board the same train. Second coincidence, your handkerchief happens to be found at the foot of the victim's bed. Third coincidence, 
one of the stab wounds inflicted on the body was by a left-handed person. You are left-handed. That is a lot of coincidences, Princess Dragomirov. Well, Monsieur Poirot, call it fate. If you report to the police your coincidences, they will laugh. A woman of my age and frailty has violently murdered a man? With how many potential witnesses who saw me doddering along the corridor in the middle of the night like Lady Macbeth? You are right, princess. You could not work alone, which means you have one or more accomplices. And it is only a matter of time before I find out who they are. I would appreciate it if you would remove yourself from my room and take your fantasies with you. Привет! Привет! That's the right answer. Oh, Poirot, you're there. She hasn't moved. But she seems to be waking up little by little. What about you? Your investigation progresses? I find myself helping everyone with their problems before they can help me with mine. I have shifted boxes, helped with hangovers, repaired an orange juicer, unlocked some Russian dolls, all so my investigation can proceed. Don't forget the dessert recipe. How can I? Truly. The labors of Hercules. My friend, I would rather clean out the Orgeon stables. Yet, I have managed to solve a few mysteries. Oh, tell me everything. The embroidered handkerchief belongs to Princess Dragomirov. I also found out that she was Sonia Armstrong's godmother. On the same train with the little girl's murderer? Exactly. Also, Elena Andreni is the younger sister of Sonia Armstrong, Daisy's mother. Another passenger connected to the Armstrong case? Yes, Book. What are the odds, do you think? But I cannot see either woman stabbing Ratchet over and over again in a frenzy. And they apparently have alibis. I had three theories concerning the broken watch. It could have been tampered with. It could have been out of adjustment before the murder. Or, of course, it could indicate the actual time of the murder. The only hypothesis I could rule out was that the watch was out of adjustment. For the others, they are impossible to verify. So, the watch is of little use to the investigation. And I was convinced that it indicated the time of the crime. Two women involved in the Armstrong case. Let us not forget our patient here. There are three women. Look, she seems to be waking up. I understand. This is Big money, big money. What's happening to me? Did I fall asleep again? Uh, indeed, Mademoiselle Locke. Did you take any medication? Sleeping pills, for example? No, I never use sleeping pills. I inspected your cup. You can clearly see that there is a residue of something at the bottom. I'm sure a lab test would confirm you were drugged. Most likely an overdose. That would explain your battle to shake off the effects. You think Fräulein Schmidt did it? She certainly had the most opportunity, but why would she? But no one knew who I was. It's impossible that someone deliberately targeted me.
הרבי שמיט הוא אומר שהוא משאר מהדרג דתי לדמן מזל לא בדרג. פראוליין שמיט או פייר מישל could have dragged your tea. They are really the only two people on this train who could have done it. But why would either one do it? Mr. Poirot, I'm feeling much better. I'd like to bring you up to date to why I ended up on this train. If you are able, I would very much like you to finish your story. Very well then. After the Daisy Armstrong case was officially closed, I put out a standing request to the police departments in the Boston area for anything on Michael Clark. But he didn't turn up on their radar. I even set up an anonymous tip line for news about Clark. That's how I met Braid, a sketchy contact on the dark web, but they found nothing I could use. Four long years passed without anything new. Every day I looked at the evidence board I put up in my apartment bedroom. Then this morning, a police report landed on my desk that changed everything. I paid a visit to the police property room and took home a box full of clues. There was his name. Michael Clark. A bill from the power company with, I'm sure, plenty of excuses why my rates keep going up. Travel. For the discriminating traveler. Also for the overworked detective who never seems to have time for a vacation. Well, I can dream, can't I? Years of no new leads in the Armstrong case, and then this. Michael Clark, the sarcastic reporter, my prime suspect in the kidnapping, murdered four years ago? This is Michael Clark? He doesn't look anything like the journalist I interviewed. Michael, you have earned a place on my evidence board. The lab team found this keychain in the cabin, but they wouldn't have bothered to examine the keys once the DA shut down the investigation. The keys were just tossed in the evidence box along with everything else. It's too unusual not to demand a closer look. What do they call this? Brass knuckles? Knuckle dusters? Illegal in Massachusetts. Possession alone can lead to serious jail time.
ratchet. It's another AR. And it's some trumpet. Hmm, a USB key. Let's plug it into my PC and see what nasty little secret it contains. So clever. All that evidence and yet no DNA found. The only fingerprints found on the bottle were Suzanne's. Suzanne's hair, so conveniently left in the cabin for us to find. It was planted. I knew she was innocent. Fluffy. Daisy's plush toy. I knew it. The faces don't match at all. They are clearly two different men. I should run facial recognition on my computer. The DA resigned soon after the Armstrong case. It haunted him just as it has haunted me. I know I have to stop printing. It's bad for the planet. Maybe they needed to show the ransom to someone to check if the serial numbers were still on record. I'll print them and on the wall they go. Shaved off the Metro beard, but I'd recognize that smug bastard anywhere. The man I interviewed four years ago posing as Michael Clark. This goes on the board. Absolutely nothing on this cassetti. His driver's license is almost surely a fake. Okay, the real Michael Clark has been dead for years. Let's see if the photo of the fake Michael Clark matches someone in the database of known criminals. I've tried this several times in the past few years, but came up empty. Maybe whoever he really is has finally made a mistake. That could be him, but he looks pretty different. Yes, he seems different at first glance, but still, it's the same person. Good! All right! He's changed his appearance a lot. Probably had some plastic surgery on his nose, but there is no doubt it's the same person. Let's see why he was arrested. Mr. Ratchet, you didn't just steal statuettes. What recent information does the database have on you? Ugh, it's so frustrating. I have a name, but I can't find anything about him. But I know just who to call. Hello, Braid. Long time. Oh, Joanna. Hey, how may I assist you? I need you to search the dark web. Yeah, uh, can you narrow that down a little? Because, uh, it's pretty big and pretty dark out here. Could you find intel about a Samuel Ratchet? Samuel Ratchet. Got it. 
bad dude? They don't come worse. Send me what you find by email. All right, hang on. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh-huh. Okay, nope. Nope, and... Okay. Oh, this might be something. I gotta do a deeper dive, but uh, you should find this interesting. Could be coincidence if I believed in them. Emailing details. Domo arigato, Mr. Robato. We're here to save mankind. Oh, it's a cookbook! This tattoo is the same on both pictures. They sell them on the internet for self-protection. What do we have here? A flashlight. They can also conceal knives, but in this case we have... lockpicks. What do we find? A capsule and a smell... Bitter almonds. Cyanide. The Orient Express. I'm going to print these tickets and put them on the board. Mr. Ratchet, you didn't just steal statue. What recent? The Orient Express. The Orient Express. The Orient Express departs from Istanbul next week. Interesting. I'll put it on the board. The event? Some old train. But that face. That man.
I've read it probably 10 times already, but I can't get enough of it. Don't know why. Maybe because it helps me sleep? Not really my style, but I'll take it. This is Ratchet's ticket. The person traveling with Ratchet has the same last name as my district attorney during the Armstrong case? I know that face. That's John Armstrong's driver. Next week, a certain Edward Masterman will be on the Orient Express. Hector McQueen will be on the Orient Express next week. Foscarelli will be on the Orient Express next week. As Ratchet is alive, the dead man can only be Noah. He's the son of my former DA. He goes on the evidence board. Here's what Hector McQueen looks like. McQueen is the son of District Attorney McQueen. Goodbye, Michael Clark. Hello, Samuel Ratchet, the man who stole your identity and your life. Damn, Ratchet is taking the Orient Express next week. McQueen, the district attorney's son, is too. Foscarelli, the Armstrong chauffeur, is too. It can't be a coincidence. McQueen and Foscarelli must have decided to take revenge and will undoubtedly attack Ratchet on this train. I have to be on the Orient Express to stop them. And above all, I must stop Ratchet. But I can't do it in Istanbul because there's no extradition treaty with the United States. Ratchet can never be judged in the US without an extradition treaty. I'll have to wait until he's in Paris to have him arrested. Every compartment is taken for this special anniversary journey. Oh, it's impossible to find a ticket. What can I do? Let's find out who's traveling on the Orient Express. Time to call Braid. It's me again. 
I haven't found anything useful yet. I need one last favor. But it's a big one. Uh-oh. Can you find me the list of passengers of the Orient Express for that anniversary trip? Hold on. Jeez, their IT is surprisingly good. Maybe because of the big event. I found the list, but they sealed my back door as I was starting to capture it. Oh, no. Whoa, calm down. I got one name. Female. The name I got before they kicked me off the server was Stacy Johnson. Do you feel like a Stacy Johnson? The question is, how is she going to feel about helping me? That's one you'll have to figure out for yourself. I gotta go back to weaving my magic on the web. Is this Stacy Johnson? Who's asking? My name is Joanna Locke. I'm a police detective. And I'm just an actress. Now what did I do wrong? Nothing. I need your help. I need to take your place in the Orient Express. Is this a joke? No way. Do you remember the Armstrong kidnapping? Of course I do. That poor little girl. I'm a police officer. I have a new lead that may help me find her killer. Wait, didn't they prove it was the nanny? I have found compelling new evidence. I've reopened my investigation. You know, I had my doubts about the murderous nanny. I played a nanny a couple years ago in a slasher. I was killed in the first episode, but it got me interested in helping kids. Stacy, please, you say you help kids? Well, I joined a couple of associations who are trying to help underprivileged kids. If this little girl's real killer is still out there somewhere, I'd do anything I could to help. Getting me on that train will help more than you can imagine. So, you want my ticket for the Orient Express? But I booked it months ago. I was so much looking forward to this trip. I'll give you twice what you paid for the ticket. You think I care about the money? You still don't get it, do you? I'm hanging up. Goodbye. Wait. Stacy, I can tell you care about kids. Here's your chance to help put this beast in prison for the rest of his life. Think of the publicity for those causes you care about. Think about the kids. The kids. Yeah. All right. We'll do it for Daisy and the kids who suffer. I'll take care of changing the tickets to your name and send it to you. Get him. Make him pay. I will. Thank you so much. Stacy was as good as her word. I received the ticket. I called my chief to let him know I was taking my vacation time. I had coming. I flew to Istanbul. I was finally going to nail the monster responsible for Daisy Armstrong's death, Michael Clark's death, even his accomplice, and, I suspected, so many others as well. You know the rest. And that's how I found myself on this train, on Ratchet's trail. The rest, you know. My identity is easily checked with the Berkshire police. Thank you for your detailed account, Mademoiselle Locke. In addition to giving us crucial details of the investigation, you have made it clear that there are many who might wish to see Ratchet dead. I know you are innocent. Your forthright testimony and your movements, or lack of them, last night, eliminate you from our list of suspects. I agree, without a doubt. Another detective will be great help to the investigation. Book. Although my friend certainly does not need any help. You are too kind. Thank you for believing me. 
I'd like to help in any way I can. Do not worry, Mademoiselle Locke. Already I see things more clearly. It's obvious whoever drugged you was trying to derail your investigation. You mean the person who did this to me is Ratchet's killer? Both Monsieur Michel and Fraulein Schmidt had the means and opportunity to drug you. While you get your strength back, I intend to interview them. Excellent idea, my friend. All this excitement has whetted my appetite. I'm sure Mademoiselle Luck won't say no to a good, invigorating meal. What? No. I want to hear what the conductor and Fräulein Schmidt have to say for themselves. It is my duty to ensure the well-being of the passengers. If Dr. Constantine has no objection, I will escort you to the restaurant car. On the contrary, some food will do her the greatest good. Well, I'm still a little shaky. Mr. Poirot, will you please keep me informed about what you learn? You may be certain of it. Thanks.